Ah, man, it's a gorgeous day here. I mean, mm-hmm. it's hotter than Hades, but it's nice. It's the humidity. Um, Traffic towards the beach is gross, so we will not be going anywhere near the beach at all this Memorial Day weekend. Happy Memorial nope. Day. So what's up, everyone? This is we do have an episode for you guys, a small one. This one's actually requested by Chastity on the Discord. I forgot last night to um, to share all of our new Supremos that joined this week. So how about I go ahead and share that? All right. And you, if you guys haven't noticed, it's just Nicole and I. <laughs> yeah, we're missing one. Uh, Jen, Jen's not here today, and she won't be here next week to record with us either. So, yeah. um, so maybe we'll do the Friday night and Saturday again. But but yeah. she's got a, a, a an engagement today, and uh, and then she's got like a, she's in a bridal party, and next weekend is the bachelorette party, and then she's going home for um, up in Massachusetts for a period of time. So she'll be gone um, for two weeks in a row for us. Um, we might try to do one virtual if we can, but when she'll be at a, at the wedding in which said bachelor party is coming up. So June is going to be a little bit of a spotty month um, for, for Jen, Jen's attendance. Um, we'll do our best. It's not the same. Um, and so we won't be doing the surprise shot segments when Jen's not here. I will be clear. Um, so I, we're going to just be stacked on our, on our waiting list, um, to make up for it. So anyway, just wanted to give you all the, the lowdown. Um, so we had this week joining Serena, Alan, Derek, and Elvis. So thank you all for joining us on Patreon. Um, super awesome. And we're happy to see you. And tonight, this is a request from Chastity. I basically asked in the Discord for our supporters, hey, what's a good episode that would pair well with Eileen Warnos, the the hooker from hell? I feel like it sounds like we're just asking, like, I'm having yeah, yeah. beef bourguignon. What wine pairs with? <laughs> so, guys, tonight I'll get this started. This is a recent case that pairs well with Eileen Warnos. We are talking about another sex worker here who just got sentenced in prison for four murders. And that's who we're talking about tonight. So it's literally, it does very pair similar. well. Yeah, it is very similar. And I, I mean, you just don't see a lot of times where these prostitutes are killing their clients. You know, it's kind of like karma to me. Anyway, we are going tonight to New York. And if anyone has been to these places uh just let us know i've driven by new york one time um well actually i think on this video well this is uh, this doesn't look no like th- this is in queens we're going okay. to queens yeah so there's four murders tonight this is the area we're going to right now where the last body was found in this little hostel the camway lodge has anyone been here i mean obvious this is queens so i'm guessing that's a pretty shitty neighborhood <laughs> i mean you always hear about it right <laughs> So that's where we're going to tonight. So if you're new here, I put all my sources on talkmurder.com. You can go there. Also want to say real quick that we are live streaming this for our supporters. Talkmurder.com slash join to support us. And it means so much that you guys do that. We're really grateful. And also um, I'm sponsored by Jupiter CBD. And that's Jupiter. Get Jupiter.com slash llama. L-L-A-M-A. And you can read my story there. No one's actually bought anything yet, but I just got to keep saying it, you know. We also have on the Patreon a yearly membership option. Yep. Like a 16% discount. I tried to, like, I was like, all right, I'm going to get the biggest discount I can. So I was like scrolling up and it stops at 16. It would not let me go past 16. I'm like, what a weird, odd number. Yeah, that is weird. To stop like you at. would think 20%. Yeah, 20% or something. But Patreon only allows 16. So I'm like, all right, that's weird, but okay. Mm. So there is a 16% discount on there right now. And all right, tonight we are talking about a killer prostitute Angelini Barini and we're starting with well I shouldn't have given away the lead there let's start the story in New York City in Queens with this man right here you want to describe this handsome gentleman um he looks pretty young um maybe like around 30 or so 
Yeah. Um, I mean, he's he's showing signs of of balding, young. Um, but like dark features, like dark hair, dark eyes, eyebrows. Uh, maybe he's like Italian. Yeah, it's a big neighborhood. Yeah, that's a good guess right there. Tell there's, me, um, there's a lot of Italians in New York. Tell me what he does. Looking at his clothes. Um. Oh, he's a chef. There you go. As I said earlier, there are four murders that was committed and four bodies found. However, this was the one that got the person arrested. This, who you're looking at, and I'll put his photo on talkmore.com, is Andrea, A-N-D-R-E-A, Andrea, maybe Andrea. It is Italian, so Andrea. Andrea. Andrea, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Andrea. Andrea Bocelli, right? That's how you pronounce his name, right? Who? You don't know who Andrea Bocelli is? I, I don't know who that is. He's a singer, and he's incredible, and he's also blind. I never heard of him. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so. He'll give you goosebumps. On. Andrea Samperoni, he is a chef. He's actually a chef at Cipriani Dolce. Has anybody been to the Grand Central Terminal? Mm -mm. When I was in Google Earth and Google Earth lets you go like and look inside the terminal, the Grand Central Terminal, dude, that gave me so much anxiety. There were so many freaking people mm -hmm. in that building. Oh, my God. Anyway, right in the center of the Grand Central Terminal is this restaurant. Now, this restaurant is really high class and well known. They actually have one. Well, they have a few. One in Dubai and another one in London. And this one right here is in Grand Central Terminal. Now, he actually worked in the restaurant in London. He's been doing this his whole life. This is a 33-year-old man. He is the head of this restaurant. Cool. The head of the restaurant, like the, the top chef, yep. like big money, big clout. Like everyone knows who this guy is. August 21st, he's reported missing. And around the same time, well, a few hours later, after he didn't come in for his shift, he's reported missing. The police track his phone. They look at the phone record since he is such a, uh, such a... Like he's responsible kind of a thing? Yeah, responsible, but he's also... I would say high class. I don't know. Consistent? Cons no, not consistent, but they know. Uh, Professional? No, like it would be like the if the mayor goes missing or something. Prominent. Prominent. That's what I was trying to think of. Since this guy is so prominent and consistent, he's always on time and everything else. He doesn't arrive for his shift at work as the head chef. So the police immediately get involved and they track his phone to that little hostel that I showed you, Camway Lodge. And this is in Jackson Heights, the Queens area. This was a Wednesday night. They track his phone there and he was actually missing three days prior, but his his shift was on August 21st. However, he goes missing on August 18th, but no one thought none the wiser because his shift didn't happen until the 21st. Anyway, on that Wednesday night, police show up. They arrive around 8.30 and at the Camway Lodge in Elmhurst, room uh, 15 on the bottom floor. Now, I'm going to read this. This is from the complaint filed against the killer here. A female later identified as the defendant, Angelina Barini, opened the door and quickly shut it. Law enforcement authorities heard what sounded like someone moving around in the room. Shortly after Barini opened the door, law enforcement authorities smelled a strong odor consistent with the smell of a dead body and burning incense. Barini stated in sum and substance and in part that she did not do it, but her pimp made her do it, and it was not her. In the corner of the room, law enforcement authorities noticed what appeared to be a garbage can with bed linens stuffed inside what appeared to be a bare human foot sticking out of the bed linens. So basically, they, they caught this woman red-handed. And as I said before, she was a sex worker. They knock on the door. She quickly opens it real quick. And she's like, oh, fuck, the police. She shuts it. And they can hear her moving around. Apparently, it's just her in there. Mm. And whatever she's doing, finally, they, I would imagine, bust open the door. Because this isn't her residence. They don't need a warrant. They come in there. And they see basically a body wrapped up in bed sheets. A dead body, obviously. He's been dead for three days. 
wrapped up in bed sheets. They could smell the body outside already on top of the incense she was burning. But in the room was a glass pipe, several burner phones, an American Express. American, yeah, I put AE, so I was thinking American Eagle credit card. <laughs> Frequent shopper. American Express credit card with his name on it. So she said that she didn't do it. Her pimp made her do it. Well, she changed her story to my pimp killed this guy to later. I actually I accidentally killed this guy, but I tried to call the police. But then my pimp told me not to. (laughs) So that's the story. Now, this is this is the girl right here. If you want to describe her. This is, well, how old does she look to you? Late 20s? Oh, she'd probably love you if she heard that. How old is she? You guys on live chat, how, how old do you think she is? Well, obviously, she's wearing makeup and stuff. You think she looks late 20s? All right, late 30s? I mean, it looks May- like maybe- she's had work done or like, you know, some 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 fillers, some bow. She's 44 years old. Oh. <laughs> That's making me feel really fucking terrible about myself. <laughs> Why? You can tell she's, I mean, she's. The dark circles don't go away when you hit 30. She's got dark circles. You can tell. 44, yeah. I would imagine that's when this photo was taken. Let me show you another one right quick. Okay, that's not a, as good of a photo. Now, look at this photo. Can you tell that she is addicted to drugs? Um, She's very skinny. Yeah. Because you can see her I don't. Drugs. I don't think I could would say she's addicted off the bat well that's definitely not nearly as flattering a photo as the first one why am i sitting in my chair like this that's the problem (laughs) that's why people can see how fat i am (laughs) oh hang on let me let me go lower too there there we go oh shit (sighs) does she have a black eye in this photo that one she really looks like she has dark circles now i don't feel as bad honestly maybe meth or heroin yeah so I couldn't find out what she was addicted to, but apparently she is a, a addicted to some hardcore drugs. Has anyone heard of this story besides Chastity who requested it? Because I haven't. And this is really recent. She just got sentenced less than a month ago. And this doesn't come up on any true crime forums and stuff that I've... Well, I'm not on any forums. But <laughs> I am the only one to have covered this case. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I am not on any forums. That's probably why I have to do seven Dahmer episodes. <laughs> I don't know Sydney what the Sydney is like meth for sure. 1,000. <laughs> for <basically>. sure. <laughs> but you would think if she was on meth, she would have like scratches and stuff. You know, they scratch. Well, it's a blurry photo. We can't, we don't know. We're not seeing her arms there. Yeah. I don't know. I We talked about it last week, but me, uh, a lot of those adult coloring books, we were watching that show mm-hmm. where, and it was a cop that said this for somebody. Yeah. They said that if they find adult coloring books in a car of someone they ex- suspect is on drugs like meth, I think, I think it was meth, then they automatically assume that the person is on methamphetamine. Because I don't know what the deal is, but the coloring books, the adult coloring books, they calm them down when they're high. Because I guess meth, I've never done meth, but I have done fucking Adderall and Ritalin. And that shit's in the same family. So I, I kind of can see how they're all fucking amped up. But, yeah. but I don't know, drawing, being if I was amped up on meth, oh my God, and having a coloring book, dude, I'd just be like, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. Apparently it doesn't work that way. Anyway, that is the person that was caught red handed. Literally the body in the dumpster. And now she wasn't the only one involved. On August 18th, they reviewed the the footage from the Camway Lodge, and around 4.58 a.m., that is when the victim, the decedent, the chef, the prominent New York chef, enters the establishment with her as a date, a John date, you know. Mm-hmm. Apparently, this is not a... And you can look at the photos online. It's pretty shady. I mean, the, the whole thing rents for $68 a night in New York City. <laughs> 68 wow. This is a very seedy-looking hotel. Anyway, that- at 4.58, the cameras show both of them walking in at 1.30 p.m. Supposedly, he's dead by this time. Only Barini exits the room. She goes outside and she rolls in a garbage can. And I would imagine she goes to the front desk and, and is like, I want to stay another few nights. <laughs> now, I think she did call her pimp. As, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But 
And, and a lot of the details are scarce, guys. I pulled as much as I can. Most of it from sources like the New York Post, Daily Mail. I have two criminal complaints, the Daily News. I mean, just kind of, kind of, um, what do you call them? Uh, not shitty sites, gossipy websites. But honestly, I, I really wanted to look more into her backgrounds and stuff like that, but it's just not there. Anyway, so at 4.58, they go in. At 1.30 the next day, Barini exits the room. She goes outside. She rolls in a garbage can. Between eight the 18th, when they went in the first time, and the 21st of August, multiple people enter the room. Mm -hmm. That's what the criminal complaint says. But, and, and it also says John Doe in the criminal complaint, but we know now that it's this prominent chef. Okay. In fact, I, can st I, I only found two other names. There's four victims in total by her. And they have kept it so tight-lipped that only two of the, the victims' names were released. One of them is a 60-year-old postal worker. That name hasn't been released. But even, you cannot find the, the victims, even on all the, hmm. the sites like Daily Mail and stuff like yeah. that. I, I know. I mean, they're just really tight-lipped. Plus, you don't hear about this case at all, I don't think, unless you guys. Between the 18th and the 21st, multiple people enter the room. But John Doe, which we know now is the chef, the prominent chef, Andrea Zamperoni, he never leaves the room. He's never caught leaving the room. So there were multiple people. And so it is the pimp that comes in there. And what I was reading, there's two other guys that come in too. And now their names have never been released. The pimp's name has, and I'll go into that, but... These two other unidentified males, I think they're like the the cut up crew, right? So oh. if if you're like in the mafia or whatever, you call the goons. I I literally it, the the criminal complaint literally makes it sound like they're the cut up crew. <laughs> you know, we got this body, y'all need to do something about it. Okay, we got it, boss. Type of shit. Like it sounds like that. Fucking crazy. Yeah. So anybody want to take a guess real quick on live chat if or how this chef died? Like what happened? How did this how did this woman kill this man right here? Be kind of interesting to know. All right. So here's what she says. During the first in interview, she says seven things. And this is documented in the criminal complaint. Number one, she says she's a prostitute. Number two, she meets a man on August 18th from Italy. Number three, he pays her for sex. Number four, man from Italy did not wake up and was bleeding from the nose and mouth. Number five, my pimp would not let me call the police. Number six, I wrapped the body up and placed it in a garbage bag. Number seven, other guys came into the room to talk with my pimp about cutting up the body. That is what she said. And she said how he dies is the the chef, the, the man from Italy, because she didn't even know his name. And, and they'll use that in court when they're prosecuting her, too. They'll say, oh, you have such a disregard for human life. You don't even know his name. I mean, like, come on. It's a John. He was there for sex. You know, you don't have to know his name. So she man could have from, learned it later as part of this whole process. Yeah, that, that is true. So she says that he took three lines, but she didn't know what drugs or, or whatever. What the the cause of the official cause of death was overdose by GBL, which is and I have it here. Can't, um, it's the it's the date rape drug. GBL. Have you heard mm -hmm. of it? Mm -hmm. I want to pronounce the real name. Rufalin? No, it's not Rufalin. It's a uh, gam. It's it's the stuff that um what's his name? The chef from the killer chef from the story we covered from the UK was using what's that guy's name the, the chef from the UK that was killing all those boys grinder to the graveyard I think we titled the episode. he was killing them on grinder using grinder though I know but he would use this drug gamma butyl I thought that lactone. was that was like the um poppers yeah no no so poppers don't kill you poppers just from what loosen you up loosen you up but the drug that killed them was GBL which oh. taken GBL apparently because there's Call it, there's high school kids that die of this shit all the time. Someone spikes the punch with GBL or whatever, and it, it's just it's one of those things where you can't have very much of it or you you die, and that's what happened. So she overdosed this 
guy on GBL and that was his cause of death. So, so let's talk about this woman right quick and her arrest and then we'll try to get into her background a little bit. So as I said before, this is uh, Barini right here. She is a sex worker and... The U.S. attorney, Breon Pierce, or Breon Peace, said the following in the, the press release, quote, the defendant drugged and killed multiple people for a few quick dollars. She stole their personal belongings while they lay unconscious, dying from the lethal drugs she gave them. So, so she's saying the pimp made her do all of that every time? Yeah. Basically, four Johns were killed between July and August of 2019. So, you know, I mean, this chef is the only one that is prominent, known throughout the community. And he's also the last one. So you could and they were eyeing her because all the other bodies she is showing are the the CCTV, the the security cameras show her leaving the, the motels. One was found in his own private residence, but the other two were found in these seedy hotels but she leaves and that's the last time that the man has ever seen so whatever they do to the body but she's always there so they knew that she was involved somehow however mm. they did they, they were like tailing her but they did kind of allow maybe not allow is a good word but they did let this chef go and that's when they they busted in but between July and August of 2019 four individuals four Johns the law enforcement and the HSA, which is the Home Land uh, Security Investigation Team, their case was looking into several lethal drug overdoses caused by her, but they couldn't prove anything because they couldn't find the bodies. Plus, they, I mean, there's no cameras in the actual hotel room. She was initially arrested for distributing narcotics. That's what they could get her for right then. And then she was, and then they tacked on the murder charges. She would rob the victims when they were drugged and incapacitated. So here are the victims right quick. We only know two of the names, including the one I just gave you. But on July 4th, 2019 at 11 a.m., the first one, John Doe, number one, Hotel in Astoria, Queens. This was near the uh, the uh, the airport in the Airway Inn at LaGuardia. A video shows Barini exiting the room at 9.34 a.m. The cause of death was, quote, acute intoxication due to the combined effects of alcohol, methamphetamine, cocaine, and fentanyl. So the chef is the only one that did not die of fentanyl. I think the reason they charged her so harshly is because fentanyl is such a big deal. Hmm. All three of the other Johns died of an overdose on fentanyl, and they believe that she did that on purpose because you don't need much fentanyl to kill anyone. Huh. On July 11, 2019, a Jean Alexander Silvero was found dead in Woodside, New York at the Crown Motor Inn, and Barini is caught leaving the premises as well. His cause of death was a fentanyl intoxication. Okay. So this is from the Daily News, 11th, October, 2019. This is the headline. This, this is why I love the Daily News. <laughs> a drug dealing hooker with a lengthy rap sheet pleaded not guilty Thursday in the fentanyl overdose of a Queens man found dead in his home two months ago. The fourth body is linked to the suspect, the drug dealing hooker. Anyway. One of the, the cousins of one of the victims, and I don't know what, I don't know which one because the trial was pretty close closed off says quote about Barini I understand she doesn't have a good history I don't have a good history it's no excuse she killed four people she deserves what she gets now all right so what do you think her sentence was and and keep in mind this a lot of the details are scarce on this case which is probably why no one's covered it because there's really not much on it mm. 30 years? Oh, shit. That was very good guess. <laughs> that was a great guess. <laughs> did I a, hit it? Yeah, you did. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, we've been doing this for too long. I can adequately guess the exact sentencing. Now, I really tried to look up her background in history. What we know about this woman, she's 40, 46 now, 
is she did come from a, a harsh background environment. She is Canadian. I did figure that out because she requested to be close to the Canadian border to see her family. So I surmise she's Canadian and she does have an older sister who would not identify her name just as Sally. She told the New York Post that she thought her sister's sentence was, quote, a little harsh, and she's going to appeal it. Now, this sentence just passed on April 27th of last month. I honestly also think it's a little harsh. 30 years, I know. You think it's harsh? Okay, so hold on a second. She still claims that she, well, the first one, or the first two, she did drug the Johns, but she didn't know that they were going to die or whatever. I do believe that. And then she would rob them. And she's also addicted to drugs. So she not only makes her money with the sex, but also <laughs> money with the sex and the lasagna. And the <laughs> she not only makes her money with the sex, but she makes her money stealing from the Johns. And then she, she was like, shit, I could buy more drugs if I keep doing this. So, I mean, I don't think, I think it's a little harsh, honestly, because... You're so soft on the lady killers. You really are. They made her out to be a monster. I don't think that's the truth, man. I mean, these guys were willingly doing drugs. It's not like she put them down. Yeah, but did, like, she's lacing them. Like, they're, it's not, like, they're doing lines of cocaine that have fentanyl in it. You I know, know what I mean? I know, but still, it's... No, if I, they I, just I, think I, they're I, doing lines know, of cocaine, that's one thing. But she's lacing them with other drugs to get them to pass out. She's killing. She's like, it's not like you think she would have learned her lesson. Oh, shit. That killed them the but first she's, time. But she's also for she's also a drug addict herself. And so I don't fucking like that doesn't that doesn't how that makes you feel more lenient uh, against her. I'm sorry. I but if you were like if your excuse is, oh, well, she was on drugs like it's OK. Uh, th that does not do any. any what do favors you guys think? For me. What do you guys think out there? 30 years too much too too little. I mean, what are you going to put her in jail for the rest of her life? Yeah, she killed four people. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> what maybe, the fuck? Maybe I am too lenient. I mean, granted, she will be in her late 70s by the time she gets out. Um, I would have made it 50 to make sure she never got out. <sighs> I don't know. I think she'll do 15. That's disappointing. <laughs> Her sister says, quote, I think what wasn't taken into account was that, of course, what happened was wrong, but the victims put themselves in there. <laughs> That's what the sister says. <laughs> and I kind of agree. I don't know. They weren't saints. They went with her. They wanted to party and they wanted to do drugs with her and have sex. It wasn't like she put a gun to somebody's head and forced them to go with her, end quote. That's true, <laughs> but like they didn't expect to fucking die. I know, but they did. Th there's, a, there's a certain level yeah, of danger there, when you... Yeah, 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 there is, but... Because the pen... You, but still, that doesn't mean like, oh, I'm going to go pay for sex. And so therefore, if I die, bah, so be it. But you're doing something illegal. Yes, you are. But killing somebody is far worse and deserves a greater punishment. It's fucking murder. I'm sorry. So <laughs> that's what the sister says. She says that she became a drug addict and got mixed up with the wrong people. She also says the following. And this is, I think it is a little harsh, but the fentanyl thing is really big right now. But she also says the following. This is a federal case, yet the government can sit there when they are letting hundreds of thousands of illegal aliens come across the border with fentanyl every day. Hundreds of thousands of people are dying from this, and they sit there and act like they have no part of this end quote i will i will attest to there are i mean you guys know there are a lot of people dying of fentanyl i mean it that shit shows up everywhere it's just best not to do drugs at this point i'm just mm -hmm. saying i mean back in maybe the night or even the late 2000s do some cocaine but now i would never do coke or anything i've only done it like once but i wouldn't i wouldn't do it now never i would turn have. it down because I mean, just a little bit of fentanyl will kill you, man. Anyway, so her sentence, as Nicole got it correct, was, and the judge says, or, or actually the special agent in charge, 
says, Barini has showed little regard for human life and with the drugs laced with fentanyl that she allegedly peddled, she offered her victims an experience they would never survive. Very well said. Mm. Now, let's talk really quick about the boyfriend and I believe that this is the pimp. I'm just going to go over it really quick because obviously this story is about her crime, but I mean, this is technically his doing too. This is the bo- well, not. this is the boyfriend right here, forty four year old Leslie Lescano. So this guy is charged with conspiring to distribute a controlled substance, and he still hasn't been tried, but he faces twenty years. Barini, when she was arrested, they went through her phone, and that's where they saw that this guy was also involved on August sixteenth, two thousand nineteen. So two days before the chef was killed. Barini sent Lascano a Facebook message that says the following, and I want to read this verbatim, and it's worse than uh, slang. It's like, it's, anyway, I got a, this is what she sends to him, quote, I got a business opera tonati. <laughs> B-I-Z-N-E-S, business. Uh, uh, O-P-R-A-T-U-N-A-D-Y. Opportunity. <laughs> opportunity, obviously. I got the business opportunity for you. I cut to the chase. Well, I cute to the chase. Then I'm willing to pay for your services. Are you with it? <laughs> and then he replies back, yes, my queen. <laughs> That's what he said. When he died, the, the chef, because she's already killed two, three others, so she is on a roll now. This guy is actually in the bathroom of that hostel already waiting to rob this guy. So they were going to put him under with the fentanyl. I don't think she wanted to kill these guys at all. I think she just wanted to overdose them a little bit and freaking, you know, take the cash and run. But because they're not going to go to cops, right? Oh my God, a, a, pro, a prostitute drugged me and took all my money. Like, okay, are you telling me you're, you know, you know, mm. they're not going to ever go to the cops. I think she just doesn't, I think she just didn't honestly know how much she was giving to these guys or cared. Anyway, so he was in the bathroom at that time. And let me see, an hour later, Lascano goes to the Rite Aid to buy gift cards and personal hygiene equipment for Barini and says the following, can you buy any, or she says to him, can you buy anything, shampoo, conditioner, and body wash, milk, I can't even, milk, milk cereal, I, I, I can't even, I don't even know what this shit is, milk, oh, cereal, C-E-R-I-L, milk, cereal, reason, oh, raisin brand, but she's typed in reason, B R L N cold cuts charter cheese cigs. <laughs> Fucking writes like that. Fucking New Yorkers. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, one last thing. So she is sentenced and she is serving 30 years. Mm. She actually requested to the judge because she was crying in court and everything else. She requested the judge to, and I think this should be granted, but she wants to move to a, a prison in Minnesota the Waseca Federal Correctional Institution because it's closer to her family in Canada. And not only that, but they have this dog program that the inmates bring or the inmates take in strays and abuse dogs. It's called the Can Do Animal Humane Services for inmates. And in fact, Whitey Bulger's girlfriend, who was just released in 2020, was in this prison a part of the program. Kind of interesting fact. But interesting. she wants to go there to participate in this uh, puppies in prison program. And I don't know. I think she, I think she should. I mean, f- I mean, not for the puppy program, but to be closer to. No, I mean, I, I, maybe she won't. I mean, she's obviously on drugs, addicted. So she well, not anymore in prison. Well, maybe, well, I guess. I mean, no, I don't think so. But she wants to be close to the puppies that will. I'm not saying what she did wasn't wrong, but. I mean, I don't you're know. a softie for the lady killers. Let's it's just. It's not like it. she went up to some random person and killed them either. You know, I. But she still killed somebody, and she killed four somebodies. Uh. Anyway, that is all you're gonna get on that. I've got a business opportunity. <laughs> Google ghetto. <laughs> She says, biz, biz, business opportunada. <laughs> it's like Spanish or something. <laughs> Holy shit. See, Natasha agrees. You really do have a soft spot for the lady killers. Yeah. Milk cereal reason. <laughs> Let me type this in. <laughs> 
This is the last text that she sent. It says the following. Are you texting this to me? No, I'm typing it in exactly how it is. Milk and cereal. That's the song. This is what she sends the guys. This is what I was trying to read. Milk, cereal, <laughs> raisin bread. <laughs> That's <laughs> raisin bread. Cold. If you sent me something like that, I'd be Wait, like, are, is that her shopping list? <laughs> Yeah, that's her text to the guy. Milk, After... cereal, raisin bran, <laughs> cold cuts, cheddar cheese, and cigarettes. Duh, s- that is her shopping list. Cheddar cheese. Cheddar. <laughs> uh, that is cheddar. I gotta say, deli sliced American is where it's at, but uh, whatever. I mean, I'm not a spelling bee, but dude, I do have fucking autocorrect on my phone. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? Holy shit. She clearly has autocorrect turned off. Maybe that's why I am so soft on her because I also love Raisin Brain. <laughs> Raisin <laughs> Brain. Raisin Brain is my favorite. But anyway, uh, if you enjoy the show, be sure to subscribe to all the podcast listeners out there. Thank you so much. We release episodes every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see our live streams every Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Those are public for anyone. And we're kind of shifting the show more towards the live streams because we fucking love it. Anyway, my name is John. I'm sitting here with Nicole. And as I said, Jen is off this week. And until next time, good night, you lovely, lovely people.